Hello everyone, Freak here. This is going to be my fourth Legends of Runeterra game. Uh, that's going on YouTube, I should say. And it might be that my opponent and I are playing the same archetype. We're playing Demacia Shadow Isles. And the specific thing we're doing here, at least on my side, is creating a vengeance-heavy deck. The idea of your units are going to die and you'll like it. It's a lot of last breath effects. Something beneficial happens when the unit dies. We're playing the, la the, the champions Lucian and Callista, both of whom level up when they see allies die. So here's a 2-1. Play a unit myself. Where are you? I'm happy to make that trade. If my opponent's willing, I'll take it. Okay. My turn. And the extra sort of context, uh, the extra little tools around Don't my deck my are way. I'm using Purify to remove text and keywords from a non-champion, a follower, so I can silence the Undying, for example, uh, if my opponent has one. Using Splinter Soul to summon a 1-1 ephemeral copy of an ally. Um, that's actually very effective this because uh, on summon effects uh, will trigger for things like Splinter Soul. So if you you know, summon a unit, and when it summons, it gives everyone plus one, plus one. Or you draw a card or something. That will all be effective here with Splinter Soul. Additionally, most of the units that I play are happy to die. Their cards like Undying here. So maybe like a kill Lucian. Okay, so I've got choices to make right here. Because I can purify the tracker so it doesn't have Challenger anymore. I can purify Phantom Prankster so it doesn't deal damage to my Nexus when things die. Or I can wait and hold on for later and simply play a different card like Undying. And I'm pretty tempted to let Lucian die and simply put you in Because I don't think my opponent's doing anything too incredibly scary yet, so let's just let this happen. Ooh, that's very strong. Okay, now it's actually getting a little scary. These are all going to attack for one damage, but they're also going to die, and that will trigger Phantom Prankster. That's really bad. So this is going to hurt. I'm going to lose a lot of health here. Please, I have connections. This trades one for one. This is a card. I lose the first half of this. Let me take about six damage. <laughs> That's okay. I can deal damage back. We both have four cards in hand. And these ones are going to hit my opponent in the face in a second. Um, okay. So I'm going to make some choices here. Uh, I want to have the ability to use Glimpse Beyond. Kill an ally, draw two. So I need to play only two mana worth of units. So Cursed Keeper. I could have played the Undying and had two damage on the board. But I play Cursed Keeper for one damage on the board. The ability to do then kill it. Cursed Keeper when it dies, by the way, because two mana for a 1-1 one, one is very bad. But when it dies, it summons this, a 4-4. Four, four. That's very effective. When the Undying dies, you revive me and give me plus one attack, plus one health. So as long as you can keep killing it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. Callista is going to bond with this Phantom We're going to go ahead and attack. Uh, I don't really want to lose my Spiderling. We'll let this one sit here. And I'm actually considering destroying this 1 1 and getting the 4 4 out, but I think I'll wait. Because I can use this as a trick. The thing that's very clever about this deck is that this last breath triggers instantly. As soon as it's dead, the unit comes out. Glimpse Beyond is burst speed. Burst is the fastest thing in the game. As long as it is your turn to act, it will instantly trigger, and you will have your burst effect done. What this means is my opponent can declare attackers, and before my declare blockers step, I can Glimpse Strike Beyond my Cursed Keeper and suddenly have something else to play. And because of that, I'm going to sort of make these sorts of choices. I'm going to... I'm 
As long as I can float two mana. Chronicler of Ruin. Kill an ally, then revive it. We're gonna make an army of these. Actually, we're gonna make an army of these. So it kills it, makes me a 4 4. Revives it, and I can do it again. So suddenly, for 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 mana. For 6 mana, I have 7 power and 7 toughness on the board. And a waiting 4-4 hey, hey, underneath. You are toast. So. Laurent Protégé is going to challenge something. Decides to kill a 1-1. Decent choice. Anything else? Okay, Callista comes out. I'm going to be happy to throw this to the wolves. It will just destroy her bonded ally. That's fine with me. Off we go. It's a decent block. That's okay. And now Callista has seen one of her allies die of the three that she wants. At any point in time, I can glimpse beyond. There's no rush. It's going to bank as spell mana anyway, so I can kind of take my time here. Okay, round six. It's my turn to attack. I have these splinter souls that I don't have a good use for yet, unfortunately. I can make copies of the Undying, and then they'll revive, and they'll grow and everything. But I'm looking for some bigger fish. Some bigger fish. At any point in time, I can use Glimpse Beyond to draw. Maybe I am waiting too long. I didn't have a lot of good options to play next round, or this round. And so at the end of the last round, I could have used Glimpse to draw some cards. That might have been the right choice. I might do it here. There was hope. Okay, so Callista's getting closer to leveling up. Now she's seen two allies die. I think it's time to move. Kill that. It gives me one of my four fours. I can play Stirred Spirits. And my supported ally gets two attack and becomes ephemeral. Ephemeral means it dies when it strikes or when the round ends, and I want these to die. I want these to die constantly. Black Spear, strong card. Well, unfortunately, that's bad for me, so... Okay. Our Spear sings for the fallen! So that's just life. But let's attack. So I'm attacking for 12 damage, which is a lot. My player should be blocking. Stumps the Undying once, it'll come back bigger. Ah, yes, chooses to die to the 4-4 four four so that Callista can level up. Oh, they're both going to die. Okay, well, Callista will level up. She'll have her new Patsy. A disgrace. The Rose shall find their vengeance! So Callista is level 2. Callista now, whenever she attacks, she revives the ally that died a while ago. She's going to bring back that Phantom Prankster whenever she attacks. Purify only works on non-champions. I can't just squash Callista. But I can make her Phantom Prankster not, um, not as effective. I have lots of Undyings. Lots of these weird things going on. So Chronicler of Ruin, kill an ally and revive it. Mostly it's just a 3-3. That's what it's here for. But I can go ahead and kill off one of my Undyings. Have a new Undying. And then a new one will revive at start of round. I'm out of board space. Six is the maximum unit cap, so it's getting a little tough here. That's a strong play. Kill a 4 2 with a 2 1. Callista comes up and she's gonna bring out the Phantom Prankster. And by the way, it always brings it out attacking. So do I care about taking this 5 damage? 
I mean, kind of, yeah. Or another ally dies, deal one to the enemy nexus. Well, might not have a choice. Oh, but to be fair, blocking now lets me kill it so that it's not there to protect Callista next round, which is a pretty valuable thing. I actually think it's better to lose the 4 1. Our vengeance has burned long enough! Act now! Because my opponent has ways of dealing 1 damage, and dealing 3 is a lot harder for them. So we'll let these die. But Callista is going to keep making value every round. Extra damage. Callista just sloughs off the damage. It remains a threat. Okay. We can play another Undying. We can make a Splinter Soul copy of an Undying. Either way, it costs 3 mana. But the Splinter Soul copy will come back as a 3 3. Chronicler of Ruin is a play effect, not a summon effect, so has to be in my hand to get anything useful out of that. So we're just going to make this ephemeral copy of the Undying. It will then die and come back, as the name suggests. And if my math is right, I have very close to lethal damage as a result of that. Because two are going to come back next I round. Fight for the That's fallen. very strong. Lifesteal and tough. Thankfully, I have Purify for that. Tough means she takes one less damage from any damage effect, and life is, of course, very good in its own. So I should be getting two. They're three threes. My allies get Challenger. That's amazing. Um, we're going to go ahead and play another Undying. It only costs me five mana to do these things. I have more than enough. That's just fine. Okay, we're going to purify you. We're going to cast on guard. My units gain challenger. And I am six over lethal. I'm still one over lethal like this. Now, if I thought my opponent could deal for exactly two, I would have one of my two twos block instead and let the three three get to face, but odds are my opponent can't. Actually, there shouldn't be good ways to deal for exactly two, so I'm not, I'm not terribly concerned about that. There are ways, but more often than not, whatever my opponent does is more meaningful than that. For example, Vengeance um, is not going to keep my opponent alive. Let's actually get misplay. Should have Vengeance something else, because uh, I have lethal damage. Okay. 